Step into the world of a groundbreaking movie from 1955 that shook up how we see things on the big screen. This film, Blackboard Jungle, doesn't hold back in showing the tough reality of American schools. Get ready for a roller coaster of feelings, it'll make you laugh, shock you, and maybe even tug at your heartstrings. Now, think about the characters in this movie. Each one brings something different to the story. Which character did you connect with the most? Share your thoughts with us. But why does this movie still matter today? What makes it so special? Think about that as you watch. Now it's your turn to share. Do you have a favorite memory tied to this film? We'd love to hear your stories. Share them with us in the comments below. So get ready for a journey into a movie that's made its mark on cinema history. And remember, your comments make this experience even better. The movie Blackboard Jungle, which came out in 1955, is known for showing the challenges in American schools back then. It broke new ground in cinema by giving a raw look at school life, but some parts might seem a bit old-fashioned to people watching it now. From my more than 30 years of teaching and working in school administration, I felt that the way they showed job interviews and the teacher's actions seemed a bit unrealistic. Even though Glenn Ford did a good job acting, his character's choices, like going back to teach after a violent incident, seemed hard to believe. Talking about the performances, Glenn Ford did well despite his character making some strange decisions. And Francis, playing Ford's wife, added to the story effectively. Louis Kellern, as a complaining teacher, brought depth to the cast, and Richard Kiley did a great job as the disillusioned math teacher. Sidney Poitier stood out playing a cool, confident black student, giving a hint of what he would do in future roles. However, Vic Morrow tried to imitate Marlon Brando and didn't quite succeed, making the film not as good overall. People might have different opinions about Blackboard Jungle, but no one can deny that it got people talking about education and society back then. Even though it has its problems, it's an important part of movie history, showing us the difficulties teachers and students faced. In the end, not everyone might like the movie, but we can't ignore its role in cinema and cultural discussions. Amid the collection of important American films honored by the American Film Institute in 1998, one particularly stands out. It's a movie called Blackboard Jungle. In this film, Glenn Ford, famous for his roles in other significant movies like Gilda and The Big Heat, which are also recognized by the Library of Congress, plays a key part. What's interesting about Blackboard Jungle is how Vic Morrow, who's also in the film, does something unusual in the trailer. Instead of staying in character, he speaks directly to the audience. This adds a different twist to how the movie is promoted. These unique aspects help make Blackboard Jungle a classic piece of cinema that's remembered even today. In the world of cinema, there are some performances that stand out for their depth and impact. One such example is an actor's role as a troubled student in a memorable film, which paved the way for his later portrayal as a teacher in another classroom classic. This transition showcased his versatility and ability to bring authenticity to his characters. Furthermore, the actor's involvement in the earlier film significantly contributed to its lasting legacy. His performance resonated deeply with audiences, earning widespread acclaim and setting the stage for his successful career. Additionally, the debut of another talented actor added to the film's appeal. Beyond its impressive cast, the recognition of the movie by the Library of Congress solidified its status as an important work of cinema. This acknowledgement highlights its enduring impact on popular culture and its influence on future filmmakers and viewers. In essence, this movie goes beyond mere entertainment. It serves as a reminder of the power of storytelling to provoke thought and inspire change. Its themes of rebellion, redemption, and the importance of education continue to captivate audiences worldwide, ensuring its place in cinematic history for years to come. In their teenage years, Paul McCartney and George Harrison attempted to sneak into a film featuring the catchy tune rock around the clock as its theme. Eager to breach the age restriction, McCartney resorted to a makeshift mustache, using dirt on his upper lip. Despite the successful deception, the duo found themselves disillusioned by the movie's lack of excitement as it focused more on acting and dialogue than the anticipated salacious content. The film starred Vic Morrow and Sidney Poitier as the lead juvenile delinquents, portraying characters younger than their actual ages of 26 and 28, respectively, at the time of the movie's release. Notably, the movie marked the inception of the rock and roll era in American cinema, prominently featuring Rock Around the Clock by Bill Haley and the Comets as its theme. This song, initially overlooked, skyrocketed to Global One after its inclusion in the film, eventually selling an estimated 25 million copies. A regrettable misjudgment by MGM, 
who declined director Richard Brooks' advice to secure complete rights to the song, resulted in the studio acquiring only film use rights for a nominal sum. The impact of Rock Around the Clock echoed beyond the silver screen, becoming a defining moment in the evolution of music and pop culture. In the world of film, stories often extend beyond the screen, intertwining with the lives of those who bring them to life. One such tale involves a seasoned actor whose legacy transcends the roles he portrayed. With a career spanning numerous films, he left an indelible mark on cinema. Yet, his final days were marked by a sudden departure, leaving behind a modest estate despite his extensive contributions to the industry. Within the confines of a particular movie, a small incident gave birth to a phrase that would echo through popular culture. In a scene depicting a teacher's daily routine, a playful disruption led to an unexpected alteration of his name on the blackboard. This simple moment of mischief birthed a nickname that would affectionately stick with him throughout the film. His distinguished career included roles in several films now revered for their cultural, historical, or aesthetic significance. From classic comedies to gripping dramas, he showcased his talent across various genres, leaving an undeniable mark on audiences worldwide. In reflection, his presence in these notable films serves as a testament to his enduring influence on the cinematic landscape. Each performance added a layer to his legacy, ensuring his memory lives on in the hearts of moviegoers for generations to come. In the early days, a movie called Blackboard Jungle had a rough time in the UK. When it first tried to get shown in cinemas there in March 1955, the British Board of Film Censors said no. They thought some parts were too scary. But after a few edits in August, they finally said yes, but they had to cut about six minutes of the movie to make it less scary. One interesting thing in the movie is when a character named Joshua Edwards talks about Stan the Man. He's actually talking about a famous musician called Stan Kenton. There's also a song playing in the background by Stan Kenton's band. These little details help make the movie more interesting and show how it was connected to the music of the time. So, even though Blackboard Jungle had a tough start in the UK, it eventually got to be seen by people there. It shows that even if things are hard at first, they can get better later on. When Sidney Poitier arrived for the filming of this movie, he faced an unexpected challenge. Summoned by a studio lawyer concerned about his activism and connections with blacklisted actors, Poitier was asked to sign a loyalty oath to the American government. Dismissing the demand as ridiculous, he, alongside director Richard Brooks, proceeded with the shooting, never hearing from the studio lawyer again. Richard Kiley's life had a musical aftermath due to his role in the film. Throughout his life, he continued to receive collections of old jazz records as compensation for the ones his character lost in Blackboard Jungle. The movie also marked the end of Joan Danton's film career, serving as her final appearance on the big screen. Based on author Evan Hunter's experiences as a teacher in New York City's South Bronx, Blackboard Jungle delves into the challenges of education in tough urban environments. Hunter, also known as crime writer Ed McBain, infused the narrative with his struggles to engage disinterested students, reflecting his frustration at their lack of appreciation for classical literature. The movie gained further recognition as Rock Around the Clock was included in the American Film Institute's list of top 100 America's greatest music in the movies. Vic Morrow's immersive portrayal of his character left a lasting impact, with his commitment extending beyond the shooting. Such dedication underscores the film's enduring influence on both its cast and audience resonating long after its release.